Amen. Amen. You, you can be seated for, for just a moment. I uh, want to thank you to these gentlemen, uh, which, by the way, are a part of the, the core of this church, and I celebrate uh, these men and the men and women that they represent that fight for our freedom and defend our freedom. And so uh, today it's, these are those, um, uh, these are those moments like where I, you get kind of chill bumps and they're just powerful because there should be a sense of pride about this great country that we live in. And, and, and these gentlemen, and again, the men and women that they represent, uh, show forth that pride today. And so we're going to pray for our military today. We're going to pray for our country as well later in our service today, but it's right for us to do so. But I wanted to include in this prayer uh, our first responders as well, which again are, are individuals that, that help defend and care for our freedom. And so... Uh, Officer Bevel, John Bevel, uh, is at this church almost every Sunday helping. Part of our, uh, our local sheriff's department and uh, serves this congregation each and every week to help protect this atmosphere and this, uh, this campus and, uh, and is a veteran as well. And so we, we honor you today, John. And, and, uh, and look, on a... On a selfish note today, I'm going to have my son, Sam Skipper, stand up for the firefighters and first responders. Um, I, I told him, he, he's, out, he's out of town, living a couple hours away, and uh, I, I wanted him to like bring his whole gear or whatever. He's like, Dad, Dad, I just... I, so this is out of the box for Sam, you just have to know. But I, I wanted to love on and respect and pray over our first responders as well as our military today. So would you bow your head with me and let's take a moment here just to, uh, to, to gather our agreement and prayer together. You say, does it really matter? Absolutely, it matters. Right here in this moment, in this local church, uh, we are doing the business of heaven, joining our hearts together in agreement. So pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, we just come before you today. We thank you for your presence that is in this service today and in this atmosphere. And even with those that may be watching right now through technology, God, we thank you that you are present. You are here with us. And so you hear our prayers, that the prayers of righteous men and women availeth much, Lord, that you hear them, you respond to our prayers today. So Lord, we come to you on behalf, Lord, of our military today and those that are, are guarding and protecting and defending Lord, freedom abroad, but right here at home domestically as well. God, we pray for a protection over them. We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of them. Lord, we pray over commanders that are making critical decisions, and, and, uh, and we pray your wisdom would be upon them today, God, that no mistakes would be made. Lord, we pray that your, your guidance and your strength would be upon them, Lord. We pray a holy protection over them, and especially those that are overseas currently right now, maybe in areas we don't know anything about. God, we pray a covering upon them and a protection upon them and that you would surround their families as well during a time, Lord, of, of not knowing what's going on, Lord, that you would minister to children and, and wives and husbands, Lord, as their loved one may be uh, across uh, the, the other end of the earth right now in a place they know nothing about. So we pray your protection upon our military today, Lord. We thank you that you would use them and we celebrate them today. We celebrate, Lord, what they are skilled to do, what they are trained to do, and we honor them right here in this place. And we pray over our first responders, especially right here in this community, God. We thank you that they are many times right, the first ones to show up on a scene. They're the first ones to respond and, and, and react to a situation. So we pray right now for a, a covering upon our local uh, municipalities, Lord, our, our sheriffs, Lord, our paramedics, our firefighters, Lord, that are working right now, even locally in this community, Lord, that you would protect them, keep them safe. Lord, thank you that they chose to live a life of service of service. May that continue to be modeled, Lord, in our country, uh, that you have served us, and Lord, you've called us to a life of service as well. So bless them today. Uh, bless Officer John. Bless Sam today. Bless these men behind me today and what they represent, Lord, for this country. And we give you all thanks and all praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said together, amen. 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 Come on, one more time. Would you give it up for them? 
Thank you. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to honor our country, country's birthday, we present to you the complete history of America in less than nine minutes. And go. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Land ho, I see Plymouth Rock. Hello, natives. Happy first Thanksgiving. Wait, if we discovered America, then how did the Indians get here before us? Hey, I don't want to be a colonist anymore. Me either. Let's stand up to King George. I'm tired of all these taxes. No, no more, more taxes. taxes. No, no more taxes. taxes. Do you dare defy the King of England? Give me liberty or give me death. Traitor. Wait, British are coming. The British are coming. What? The Beatles are here? You say you want a revolution. Well, you know. Wrong British invasion. They're in about three more minutes. July 4th, 1776, Independence Day. America was born. Can I get a whoop, 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 whoop? Wait, we beat the Brits. Now we've got to pick the father of our country. Let's see. Pick me, pick me. Any, many, miny, mo. Aw, but he has wooden teeth. And he chopped down a cherry tree. Is that true? I cannot lie. They're only fables. Guys, I just purchased the Louisiana Louisiana for 15 mil from France. It'll like double our country's size. Well, I'm Lewis. And I'm Clark. We'll explore it. And make maps. <laughs> Wait, the British are coming. Again? They're burning down the White House. Let it be, let it be. No, not yet. It's only 1812. Besides, we need a patriotic anthem to boost morale. I got this. <clears throat> And the rockets are red glare, the bombs bursting in air. Remember the Alamo, not that. <laughs> it's 1849. Let's go to California. There's gold in them there hills. 1863, President elect. President Lincoln signs the Emancipation Proclamation to free slaves. Civil war breaks out and over 600,000 Americans die. Four score and seven years ago. President Lincoln is shot by a disgruntled actor. So the moral is never trust an actor. Hey, wait, we have 140 years to go. Okay, in 1876, Bell invents the telephone. 1880, Thomas invents the light bulb. 1886, the Statue of Liberty is erected. Hey, Teddy Roosevelt, que pasa? We are Spain, and we're going to take over Cuba and Puerto Rico. What are you going to do about it? Spain? Come on, Rough Riders. Let's galley on up to San Juan Hill and get them. <laughs> Her buddy. Ooh, man, I got saddle sores. I'm going to have to get me one of them horseless carriages Henry Ford built. <gasps> yeah. Baby, you can drive my car. Enough of that. We only have like three minutes and a hundred years to go. <laughs> <laughs> World War I, the Allies are led to victory by the Doughboys. Congratulations, girlfriends. They passed the 19th Amendment. We can finally vote. 1920s, flappers, jazz music, and Charlie Chaplin. Beep, 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 this beep, just beep, in, beep. Lucky Lindbergh flies solo across the Atlantic Ocean. The New York Yankees welcome Babe Ruth to Boston. Will the Red Sox ever win again? Einstein develops the theory of relativity. The 1920s come to a screeching hawk with the crash of the stock market. The Great Depression. Brother, can you spare a dime? Cheer up. Roosevelt's new deal will bring us hope. Toto, I've got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Oh, oh Miss Scarlett, I don't know nothing about birth and no babies. <laughs> Frankly, dear, I don't give up. Hoover Dam was completed. <clears throat> The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Wait! On the radio, Pearl Harbor has just been attacked. December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. World War II, 
the Holocaust, D-Day, Hiroshima, the greatest generation comes home and the baby boom begins. Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier in baseball. In the 1950s, we're back at war in Korea, but on the radio, we're playing rock and roll. You ain't nothing more than Forget the radio, what's on TV? Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Bond, James Bond, has not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. 1963, President Kennedy is assassinated. An atheist mother convinces our Supreme Court to ban prayer from public schools. But lava lamps are all the rage. This is your old friend Ed Sullivan coming to you tonight. We have a really, really big show. It's the British Invasion all again. Welcome the Beatles. Hey, now this is you. Oh, I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. <laughs> Daddy, why is she coming to our school? Well, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act. Does that mean I have to act civil? Right. <laughs> I have a dream that one day our children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. <laughs> this is Walter Conkright coming to you live April 4th, 1968. Civil rights leader Martin Luther King has been assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, look at this. I got drafted by Vietnam. Well, don't go, man. It's the 70s. Give peace a chance. Cool. Let's go to Woodstock. Psychedelic. Yeah. Space, the final frontier. <laughs> this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I am not a crook. <laughs> Float like a... Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I am the greatest... 1976, Happy Bicentennial America. Last dance, last chance for love. Disco rules. Luke, I am your father. The Star Wars saga begins. <laughs> Okay, hurry up, hurry up. The, the 80s, 80s big, big hair. And MTV. We, we are, are the world. world. We, we are, are the children. children. The U.S. hockey team beats the Russians. Can I get a woot woot? Do you believe in miracles? I'll be back. Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Sandra Day O'Connell becomes the first woman Supreme Court Justice. Rap music comes out of the hood. <laughs> Apple computers and Microsoft hit the market. Geeks get rich. It's the ultimate revenge of the nerds. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. The space shuttle Challenger explodes after liftoff. Hasta la vista, baby. By the early 90s, cell phones and grunge music burst on scene, and so does Prozac. Michael, Michael um, Johnson, Magic Johnson brings a new face to the AIDS epidemic. Show me the money. Mama always said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Desert storm invades Iraq, Persian Gulf. A decade of prosperity brings us into the new millennium. George W. wins by a dangling chad over Al Gore to become president. I demand a recount. <laughs> September 11th, 2001, the day the world stopped turning. America mourns the loss of thousands of innocent lives. The U.S. military goes back to Iraq and removes dictator Saddam Hussein. In 2000... <laughs> In 2005, Hurricane Katrina destroys the Gulf. But thousands come to their rescue. November 2nd, 2008, Barack Obama is the first African American to be elected president. The long war on terror still continues. Donald Trump was elected president. Make America great again. 
In March 2020, COVID-19 shuts down the world. Can anybody spare some toilet paper? <laughs> Our Supreme Court overthrows Roe versus Wade. So, social media makes everyone an expert on everything. Wrong. What is meant to bring us together now divides us. For 246 years, we've overcome wars, depressions, and civil unrest. A remnant remains of believers who trust in God and stand firm on the foundation of our forefathers. Because our people had faith in each other and faith in God. Now with hope, we look forward to the next chapter in our history. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, America! America. Awesome, awesome, awesome job, awesome job. I, uh, not sure if I could claim half that group as family or not. <laughs> if you don't know, uh, that, that was my brother on the, the far, I guess my right, your left, and uh, been a part of this church long before I was, and uh, this is his limelight. This, he, he's in his groove right there. So when you get him and my wife together, crazy things happen. So, hey, I was told a short while ago that we have someone with us today that served in the United States Coast Guard in World War II and is 100 years old. Uh, Fern Nielsen, could we just say hello to you right there in the back this morning? God bless you. Amen. That's so, so awesome. And I was told that she will turn 101 years old next month in August. And so, so we want to go ahead and say a big happy birthday to you in advance. God bless you. Thank you for being here uh, today. Again, this is a, a, special, a special day for us to, to honor our country uh, honor our military, honor those first responders, and you know, we have a great country. It's important to me as uh, a local pastor to celebrate that. Uh, are there a lot of things that, that we wish could be different or would be different in our country? Absolutely, but we have a lot to celebrate. Think about it. You're a part of a nation that I believe is the greatest nation, the most powerful nation that has ever been on planet Earth since the very beginning of creation. I think, think about that, I don't, and I don't say that lightly. I say that, and again, taking it to the root system of where this country was founded, what it was founded on, and we've had our bumps in the road, we've had things that haven't gone well and haven't gone right for sure, but I still believe that God's blessing is over this nation. And so I want us to celebrate that today. Uh, that's why we're here. That's why uh, we're doing a little hoopla today. Uh, it's hopefully why we put on some red, white, and blue. And, uh, and, and to celebrate that. So I, I wanted to, to take a few minutes today. And I, I, I am on the clock somewhat. And it's a short time. And we got hot dogs around the corner and stuff. But um, I, I wanted to stay in my series that we've been in as a church here the last uh, four weeks. This is our fifth week called My Shepherd. And if, you, if you're not aware, we've been doing a summer series called My Shepherd out of Psalm 23. And we are memorizing Psalm 23. Uh, we have even purchased a baby lamb as a church. Did you know that? She's out, out front. Her name is Cece. CC Grace, make sure you say hello to CC Grace today. Been living at the Skipper House now for the last month, and uh, we've had to get saved over a few times, <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's been been a fun fun ride. And I want to I want to honor God's word today. I'm going to ask you if you would stand to your feet and let's recite this scripture together. 
as we've done the last few weeks. And if, if you would like to take that scripture home, we've made those av- available there on your seat that you can take that, memorize it. And let's read the word of God together today again, verses one through six. It's a short uh, psalm, but let's recite it together. One, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He, for his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless your word today. and Strengthen us by it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I, I wanted to just focus on the phrase... Uh, that that we quoted in verse 3 last week we talked about he restores my soul we talked about how he's a God of restoration he's a God that comes close and he's a he's a God that leads us and guides us and then right after that the the part b to verse 3 is that he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake and I think that's a relevant word even as we celebrate uh, our Independence Day for 4th of July tomorrow, that he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I want to just talk about that for a few minutes and, and uh, mention a few things, and then we'll have a prayer time together. And, and again, I hope you hang out and uh, just enjoy being on the campus today. we got good weather so far, so good, and uh, hoping that that remains. What is a path of righteousness? I, I pondered that this week. Paths of righteousness that the good shepherd leads us in. So what, what qualifies uh, as paths of righteousness? Well, I mean, there's, there's a couple things here that I would, I would mention. First thing is this, it's a straight path, right? The Bible says that he will make our crooked path straight. So a path of righteousness is a straight path. Can I tell us today that righteousness doesn't take us all the way around? Righteousness takes us straight toward God's best and what he has in store for us. It would also be a level path, meaning that it's uh, it's, it's sure-footed to walk on. It's a sure path. It, in other words, it, you can know that you can trust in the path of righteousness that God takes us on. Let me just say this. Paths of righteousness are not the easy path. I think we all know that, but it's good to to remind ourselves of that. That that paths of righteousness are not uh, necessarily the, the easy route. God hasn't called us to the easy route. He's called us to the level route. He's called us to the sure route. He's called us to the route that he said he would bless and he would honor. It's the blessed assurance path. Jesus called it a narrow path. Meaning that you, you got to stay focused to stay on that path of righteousness. But there is also blessing that's attached to that path. And as we live in the blessing of God, we can know that he will always lead us and guide us. There are paths that are right. There are paths, let's call this, uh, there are paths that uphold and reflect the name of God. If you're taking notes or you need to remember it, that's a good one to remember. What is a path of righteousness? It's a path that upholds and reflects the name of God. He will lead us in paths of righteousness for his, say it with me, his name's sake. That's interesting when you study it, like David says that the reason he takes us on this path of, of, that's narrow, that's sure-footed, that's level, is for his name's sake. It's not for your sake. Remember, he cares for you. He's Jehovah Rohi. He is the good shepherd that brings provision. I shall not want Jehovah Jireh, the God that always provides for all that we need. That's what the shepherd does. But watch this. He leads you in the right way because his name is on the line. 
This is a good word for us as a nation right now. It's a good word for us, especially as believers in a Judeo-Christian nation that was founded on biblical principles in Scripture that believes that all men are created equal. But God's blessing is over this nation as we stand up for the name of God. And that's really why we're here today. We honor this flag and the colors and the stars that it represents. We honor the military and what they give of themselves to protect our freedoms uh, day in and day out and even others' freedoms around this globe. We honor our first responders, but really what we're here to do today is honor the name of God. That's why we're here. You say, well, what does that have to do with the 4th of July? It has everything to do with the 4th of July. Because he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, a name represents rep, uh, 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 reputation. It represents this, uh, what somebody is or what they uh, represent. And, and a name is reputation. Come on, let's get, you know, even my name, right? The skipper name. You know, I tell my kids, especially when they're a little younger, they're getting into adults now, but I'm like, respect the name. Respect the name. You're, you're honored with that name, like live with that name, right? The reputation of that name, protect it, guard it. And names are important. Yes. Names are important. And when we think about the name of God, remember, David says he leads us because his reputation is on the line. Think about that. I, I think you could go as far even to say that the, the blessing on this country is still here because God's name is on the line. I, I really feel in a lot of ways there's so many parallels to the United States of America and Israel. And God, when we talk about God's blessing and the things that he desires to do, and even historically, that the way God has used uh, the U.S. of A. is a direct result of its blessing to promote the gospel throughout the globe and also to continue to be a blessing over Israel. Uh, I've said this before, not scriptural necessarily, but I think there's a reason that Jerusalem, the three center letters of that name are USA. We're connected. And it's a biblical, scriptural, divine connection of blessing that we have. And so we need to recognize that. And so when you look back in Scripture, and I, and I want to do that, you see that many times the history of the Israelites was stiff-necked, the Bible said. Stubborn. Unrighteous. They fell to the wayside. Instead of lining up with the, the things that God said to do, what did they do? Many times they, they fell flat, right? They went their own way. They, they stopped worshiping. They stopped honoring. They stopped celebrating the things that God had done. And as a result, they got off track. And many times we see throughout Scripture, especially in the Old Testament, that uh, God's people got way, way off track. And I wanted to read a, a quick Scripture to you out of Isaiah 48. I know what you're thinking. Man, he's got going deep into the... Old Testament prophets here on this quick service. But, but look, we need to get some context. I want you to read this and hear uh, what, what it says. This is God talking. He, he's talking to God's people. He says, you have neither heard nor understood from, your old, from, from of old your ears have not been open. Well, do I not know how treacherous you are? You were called a rebel from birth. For my, say it with me, my own name's sake... I delay my wrath. For the sake of my praise, I hold it back from you so as not to destroy you completely. See, I have refined you, though not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction for my own sake. For my own sake, God says, I do this. How can I let myself be defamed? I will not yield or share my glory with anyone. Can I, can I just tell you, this is a great picture of what I believe that God kind of looks at the United States right now, and there's a lot of things that are not right. There's a lot of things that uh, the wheels have come off on in terms of morals and ethics and division and so forth. And God says, but my name is on the line. 
And I'm not giving up on this great country. I'm not, because there's still a remnant of people. There's still a group of believers like that are at Christ Community Church in Cumming, Georgia that are gathered together in my name. And I believe, and God still, I believe, is going to do some great things through the United States of America. And I want to be a part of it. I don't know about you. I want to be a part of it where God does something extravagant in these last days and does something supernatural. And we will only be able to say, to God be the glory, great things he has done. He's done it. We couldn't do it. And we're certainly not worthy of it. We certainly can't perform for it. But he says, I lead you because my name is on the line. My namesake, he says. The reputation of his name, let me just remind you that you bear the reputation of his name personally. You are an image bearer. You were created. Man, get this identity. You were created in the likeness and the image of the Most High God. You bear his reputation to reflect his glory in this earth we don't always do that well I mean we know that we suffer sometimes we we make mistakes we we fall short but at the end of the day who God created you to be is a reflection of his glory and his reputation and his image you are a image bearer And he says, I will never leave you or forsake you, not because of what you do right all the time, not because of what you qualify for, but because my name is on the line. His name is on the line. That's why you don't have to worry about your destiny. God says, my name's on the line. He wants to show off through your life as you reflect his glory in this earth. So a couple things that that his name is, right, real quick here. His name is protection. We need to know that. We need to grab hold as we celebrate, as we honor the name of the Lord in our country. We need to know that his name is protection. Can I, I, can I just tell you, I firmly believe with all my heart, even as they, they went through this uh, timeline of this drama a few minutes ago, and you look at the incredible things that this country has come through in hundreds of years and conquered victoriously, I don't, I don't uh, underestimate, again, uh, millions of, of individuals that have given their life for freedom that we hold dear today. That's, there's been sacrifice involved, but God has blessed this country because we have stood on his name, and there's protection that comes with that. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it, and they find protection. They find safety. When you don't know what to do, say his name. Because his name is protection. And we as the people of God in this nation, we need to be calling on the name of the Lord for protection more than ever before. Not, we know we, we're not getting it all right. We know there's things that need to change. We know there's things that need to shift. But we need to be steadfast on calling on the name of the Lord. Because the name of the Lord is our protection. It is our refuge. It is our safe place. It is our bunker. It's the place that we can go to that is always fortified. God's name is fortified. Did you know that? It's a strong tower. The the second thing that his name is, is it's provision. It's provision. His name is enough. His name is enough. We can count on his name. We can lean on his name and know that he is our portion. That he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in his name, in Christ Jesus. God has many names, as you know, that, that really uh, share his reputation, that, that reflect his reputation. Again, Jehovah Rohi is the one we've been studying. The Lord, my shepherd. Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. Jehovah Nisi is another powerful name. His banner over me is victory. Jehovah Shalom, he is the God that brings peace in the middle of the storm. Jehovah Shema, he's the God that's always present. He's always there. He shows up right on time, and he never leaves us or forsakes us. Again, we could go on and on about these compound names of God that reflect his his nature and who he is, his reputation. But the greatest name is the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. 
the name that every person will humble their knee to and bow. If not on this earth, one day stepping into eternity. It's the name above every other name. Everybody say Jesus. Come on. There's provision in that name. We partook of the Lord's Supper together in this church last week in our services. And, and it's that reminder that, that God's provided all that we need in Jesus. The bread of life, the blood of Jesus that washes away, takes away the sin of the world. And then finally, his name is power. His name is power. It's protection, it's provision, but it's power. Everybody say power. power. And, and this is important because many times we feel like we need to flex to display power. We need a power move, if you will. There's many Christians today that say we need a power move. There's lots of movements happening today in this divided culture that we live in and, and very polarizing even in some of the uh, uh, Supreme Court decisions that have happened recently. Let me tell you, and again, I celebrate it on some level, but what it's going to do is it's going to polarize even greater. That's what's going to happen. We, we need to be prepared for that. And instead of moving to protest, we need to move into prayer Amen. as the body of, of Christ. It's not time to protest, it's time to pray like we've never prayed before because the enemy is doing everything he can do to continue to divide and conquer. And we as the people of God, it's not time to be protesting. It's time to be on our knees sucking carpet in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be praying. If anything, if anything, the decisions that have been made as of late should call us to a greater sense of prayer than we've ever had in the body of Christ and in Christian America. Right now. Because it should tell us God is moving, God is doing some stuff, and we need to be invoking the hand and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ like we never have before. It should motivate us. It should instill power in us like we've never had before, not in our own strength, but in the name of the Lord. There's power in the name of the Lord. Even in your personal life, my friend, young person, elderly person, seasoned person, middle-aged person here today, when you don't know what to do, just know one thing, call upon the name of the Lord. It sounds so easy. Yeah, he made it that easy. Just call on his name. In the middle of the night when you can't sleep and you're, you had a, a nightmare, there's things that are keeping you awake that are anxieties of things coming up. I can't pay my bills. This doctor report is going this way. My family's falling apart. I don't know if I can retire. Call on his name. Because in his name, there is peace. In his name, there is power. In his name, there brings this, this unity, this steadfast love that you can anchor your life on and depend on. There's power in his name. I believe that there's still Christians that are proclaiming his name, not a political party, not a, a certain persuasion. We're claiming his name and the victory that his name brings. Can I hear an amen today? Come on, I, I know we, we got to vote and there's things we need to apply to. There's things we need to be invested in and involved in. But I, I'm just here to tell you today as your pastor, it's not about a political party. Let's, let's, don't, let's don't dumb it down that far. Let's keep it spiritual. Let's make sure that we are invested spiritually and that we are voting Jesus. Because if, if we're not careful, we become part of the problem rather than the solution. And it's a spiritual problem. It's not an economic problem. It's not a justice problem. It's not an immigration problem. It's, it's not a, 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 a certain sexuality problem. It's a spiritual problem. And cancer and disease that's in our country. And God has planted you in this country. Hopefully as a child of God, if you're a believer. Not so that you can wear the Christian badge and put a cross on your chest and say, I'm saved. And I can take a stance against this and that because the word says, again, nothing wrong with some of that. But if you are not doing your battles on your knees in prayer, my friend, then we're missing out. We're missing the point. We've got to invoke the name of Jesus, the power of that name and what it brings. So really... There's two questions I ask you here today as we prepare to close. 
Do we, do you trust in his name? Do you really trust in his name? Not in a government, not in Supreme Court justices, not in a blue or red party. Do you trust, do we trust in his name? Let me give you a little history. I love history. You know that. The second question is this. Do we really believe that in God we trust? Do we really believe that? We say yes. But do we really believe that? In God, we trust in his name. You see, when you back up in our history and, and you look at uh, that motto, again, I, I love history. In the War of 1812, there was a man named Francis Scott Key. And he's the one who, would have, uh, who, who wrote our Star-Spangled Banner, our national anthem, Francis Scott Key. I don't even know if they teach this stuff in school anymore. Maybe back in the day. And the first motto of this, this phrase that we use, that we're even getting away from in our culture today, in God we trust, came out of this national anthem. But at the time, uh, it was actually a, a poem that was written in the War of 1812, Francis Scott Key, having witnessed the bombardment of Fort McHenry by the British in Baltimore at Harbor, Baltimore Harbor in 1814, he wrote a poem titled Defense of Fort McHenry, which would later become the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner. And this be our motto, it says, in God is our trust, which would be sung at the same point as God gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. And then later in 1864, the actual phrase would be printed on two-cent coins. Did you know we used to have two-cent coins? In God we trust. That's when that phrase would have been printed on the first currency in the United States of America, and those coins would have been, been printed. I, I think I've got some pictures of, of this would be obviously one cent and, and Abraham Lincoln. Nobody looks at coins anymore. Did you know there's history and culture on our coins of things we need to recognize, things we need to be teaching our kids? Young person? And currency's on its way out. We're seeing that more and more. Did you see just recently, Amazon One is the name of it, comes out, and you can transact by simply putting your handprint to make a transaction. That's, where, that's what's happening now. Currency is going away. We know that, but it is literally going away. Look it up. Amazon One. Just put your hand out there and you can transact anything with your handprint. Currency's fading away and so is this thought. And on all of these coins, if you'll go back to that one of those other ones there or one of the backs of those, you see this, this Latin phrase. Did you know this is on your currency? E pluribus unum. E pluribus unum. Unum, and here's what it means out of many, one. Out of many, one. You see, back in the 1800s, there were, you had the Confederate states, you had the Union states, and, and everybody was printing their own money. And so they said, we, we need to pull everybody together. We need one currency. We need to become the United States of America. And so that phrase, that Latin phrase says, out of many, one. The body of Christ is supposed to be diverse, but unified in one purpose, under one banner, and his name is Jesus. That declares, in God we trust. In God we trust. Later on, after World War II, that phrase would have been printed on paper currency. As the United States came out of World War II and stepped foot into the Cold War, fighting communism, there were 
righteous congressman that stood up and said this should be on every bit of currency that the United States has that we declare that we believe in God with all our heart and we want the whole world to know that our provision doesn't come from any government it comes from God alone and so they they made that happen it was a unanimous vote imagine that that was in 1957 and so this has been the the motto and again penned in 1814 by Francis Scott Key as an undertone in the Star Spangled Banner in God we trust do we really trust in his name and do we really believe in God we trust there's nothing this is the takeaway today this is where I want you to put feet to faith there's nothing more powerful than invoking the name of God in your life it's surrender it's submission but it also becomes this empowerment that's what we need to grab hold of today it becomes this empowerment for us to know we don't stand alone we don't stand under our own banner we don't stand under our own flag we stand under the name of Jehovah God and most importantly the name of Jesus everybody say Jesus I, I close with this and then we'll pray in 1st Samuel chapter 17 we see this great unorthodox victory that takes place as there is this incredible giant standing up against the Israeli the, God's people the Israelite army again not just the people the army defying the armies of the living God and there's this shepherd boy named David who we're studying the words that he pens to us thousands of years later the Lord is my shepherd and he shows up and he says he's bringing cheese sandwiches to his brothers on the front line and he said who is this joker this nine foot six inch dumb giant who in the world does he think he is defying the armies of the living God you know what happened there he got a holy anger we need to get a holy anger right now that's why I say it's not time to protest it's time to pray test it's time to get on our knees and get on our face before God and start praying and invoking the name and so here's what you know the story I won't go into it because I'll just preach the whole thing and I don't have time it's, it's he says the, the, uh, uh, Goliath speaks to him and he says what do you come at me like I'm a dog with sticks you know and, and he's, he says you come at me with a spear and a javelin and a sword but I come at you in the name of the Lord I come at you you come at me with your weapons and the things that you've got but I come at you you don't realize yeah I've got all these scared army behind me and all these 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 uh I was going to call them weenies, but I, we're about to eat some of those. I would, <laughs> all these scared thousands and thousands of warriors behind me. I'm not coming at you with them. I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. And then he declares, today I will feed your flesh to the birds of the air and cut your head off. And then he says these five words that you need to grab hold of personally in your life. The battle is the Lord's you see when the Lord fights the battle it's for his namesake it's not for your namesake but he's your shepherd you're his sheep he's there to guide lead protect take care of you and lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake amen would you bow your head as we close our time together today let me, let me ask you a question. Is your life surrendered to that name? Is your life surrendered to that name? And maybe you need to do that today. Maybe, there, maybe there's a pull. Maybe there's a tug that you feel in your spirit. Can I just tell you, God's made that simple. Maybe you're watching today online or even later than this televised time together. God can meet you right where you're at. He just calls us to surrender to that name. 
If that's you today, I just want to lead you in a quick prayer and pray for you today on this July 3rd, 2022, that God wants to honor his name in your life and you want to surrender your life to that name. Would you just slip your hand up real quick in this place, anywhere? Yes, sir. God bless you, young man. Yep. Yep. All over this room. Yep. I see those hands. That's for the Lord to see. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anywhere else, I'll wait just a second. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything you need is in that name. Healing, peace, victory, wisdom. It's all included in that name. Thank you, Lord. Can I just ask everybody to put your right hand over your heart today? We pledge allegiance as we did earlier. Let's let's pledge allegiance to the Lamb today. His name is Jesus. Say these words. Heavenly Father, I come before you today as a humble sheep needing a shepherd. I call you my shepherd, my good shepherd, and I submit my life to you. I ask that you restore my soul. Give me a new beginning today. Come into my life, heal me, cleanse me, and give me a new beginning. Lead me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. I declare you are my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for our nation today. We say just as David did. Lord, the battle's bigger than us. The battle's more than we can handle. The battle is uh, sometimes seems even too far gone, but Lord, we don't trust in chariots. <laughs> we don't trust in horses, as David said in Psalm 20. We choose to trust in the name of the Lord. So today we put our trust in your name. We put our trust in who you are And Lord, we thank you that even in spite of us so many times, Lord, it's for your name's sake. But we trust in your name today. And God, we pray that you would continue to lead this country forward for a kingdom purpose and a kingdom agenda. But we thank you that that in these days that we live in that are so fragile and seem so turbulent as as the shifting of, of the current and the waves happen so quickly, it seems, in the day that we live. Lord, you're not caught off guard by any of that. So may our heart today, may the church of Jesus Christ, churches just like this one in local communities all over this great nation, may they be anchored in your love. May they be anchored in the power of the spirit of the living God because it's not by might or power, it's by the spirit of the Lord. So we ask that your spirit would come and refresh us again, strengthen us again as we go to our knees and humble ourselves before you, calling upon your name turning from our wicked ways, we ask you to come heal our land. Do something fresh, do something new and use churches and people just like us to do it. And we tell you, we will never share and boast in your glory. We will point all of it back to you and give praise to you because we know it's nothing that we could have done on our own. So surround us today. Surround this nation today. We plead the blood of Jesus over it. And we thank you for protection, provision, and the power of your name to be at work. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen and amen. Would you stand up on your feet today? And We're going to close out our service like we traditionally do, uh, singing God Bless America. Can we do that? You know, this song would have been, uh, really would have come out in the middle of World War II as this country came together and began to sing the lyrics of this song, God Bless America. And I'm going to ask you to sing it with me so that I'm not solo, or I'll sing solo, you can't hear me. God Bless America.
dedicated your life to him, can we ask you to do a couple of things? Can you tell someone? We'd love for you to tell us. Tell us that you did that so we can celebrate with you. If you don't have a Bible, come see us. We don't want you to leave here without the Word of God in your hand. And if you don't have a local church, find one. And I think this is a pretty good one. Amen. <laughs> um, hey, we're going out to have a great time celebrating together. For those of you that might need a little cooling off, there's some of these out there. Yes. You will be praising Jesus in just a minute for that. We're going to go get our kids, but I want to pray over you and pray over our food before we go. Father, thank you so much that we live in this great nation. Thank you for your presence, Lord, in this place. Thank you that we're carriers of your presence and reflectors of your glory. And Lord, we just ask that you bless the remainder of our day and bless this food to our bodies, Lord. And I thank you that today that there'll be people in here and in our community in this church, Lord, that make new friends and build new relationships and community this afternoon as we're standing out there celebrating and enjoying being together. So bless this time in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. Have an awesome week. We'll see you outside in just a minute. What a great time of worship in the Word. We're so thankful that you tuned in with us today. Hey, if you gave your heart to Christ today for the very first time, we want to know all about it so that we can connect with you. So go ahead, go on our website, fill out a digital connection card so that we can celebrate with you. This is the greatest decision of your life. Also, if you have a prayer request or a praise report, we want to know about it too. And we'll be able to connect with you if you'll fill that out on the digital connect card. Also, you have multiple ways that you can give. You can give through our website, text to give, and also on your Realm app. So make sure that you go online and give so that we can give back to the kingdom and continue to make an impact locally and globally. Hey, thank you again for watching this week. We can't wait to see you again next week. We hope you have a great week ahead.